everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. But if you are new here, then my name is Larian and I have four children. And in four and a half weeks, I'm due our fifth child. I can't believe I'm actually going to have five children. But when I was little, I always wanted four children. I wanted two boys and two girls. So I have got three boys and a girl at the moment and we're having another girl, which I am really grateful for. I think it would just be so lovely for our youngest, Flossie. Um, my boys are called Cosmo, Horatio and Rue and my daughter is called Flossie. And then our fifth, we have sort of decided on the name now. Um, but yeah, we'll announce it when she's born. So this is going to be my pregnancy update, but sort of like a bit of a life update too, just um, to make it a bit more interesting. I know um, lots of people have lots of questions. Um, I was thinking of doing a QA, and a but I didn't want to like do a QA and a and no one's interested. So if you would be interested in a QA, and a then any questions you have for me, please leave them below. If I get like enough questions, I'll do a Q&A. I'm just going to go straight in with like any symptoms I've got or had, um, how it's all going and my plans and everything for the new baby. Heartburn um, is something I'll start with because I usually suffer really badly with it but this time I have not suffered as badly. The past few weeks, so I'd say from around 32 weeks, I started suffering quite badly with it. Um, although it's definitely not all the time, I think it's triggered by spicy food, fizzy drinks, sweet stuff um, and then quite a lot at night time I get it but last um, it would have been last year with Flossie it was really bad and I got a Moprazole from the doctor um, which if you're suffering from heartburn I massively recommend going and getting it I haven't needed it this time but it saved me last time you take one I think every day but just in the morning and you don't get heartburn, it's incredible. So if you are suffering with it, then do get that. But at the moment, I've just been buying like the Rennie's tablets or even the Tesco own brand and just been using those because um, I've just not needed anything. I'm not gonna go and waste a prescription when I don't really need it a lot. I find that I always need the toilet. I don't think I got it as bad last time, maybe I don't remember, but this time I'm going to the toilet like three times in the night. It's crazy. In the day, I'm probably going every hour. I don't even think I'm really like drinking that much water or anything. I drink a lot of tea. So I'm drinking raspberry leaf tea. That is something I always have taken in pregnancy since Horatio, my second. So it's supposed to help strengthen your uterus I think um and sort of like help your labor be a bit shorter and quicker I take you start from I'm gonna say 34 weeks and you have a cup a day and you build it up to three cups a day so I'm now on three cups a day um, and I have one in the morning one in the middle of the day and one evening afternoon um, and then I also take the tablets too I'll show you the ones I take yeah I've been taking these and I take two a day, um, morning sort of time. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I'm overdoing it, but I've done it with all my pregnancies since ratio. So three, this is my fourth pregnancy now. And I think it's helped. My first labour was really long. I know lots of first labours are, but since then, although it took a while for me to actually go into labour with my third child, Rue, my labours have been really quick and I haven't had any like problems after or I just think they've really helped so I recommend taking them. I would say people find it really strange when I say this but I don't feel pregnant. So the only thing is my bump which I think it's just started to get bigger now that is just Rue coming in from outside but I don't think it's been very big. I don't feel pregnant. I think I'm really on the go with so many children and I just haven't had a chance to stop and think and realise that I'm pregnant. <laughs> So I just keep going. The days have flown by, life has flown by. And yeah, in four weeks really, five weeks, I'm gonna have a baby, it's crazy. I did have, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but something called dysthesia, which is where um, the hormones in your pregnancy change your taste. I would never had it before, so I would have thought it would be something I would never get. But yeah, I never had it with, um, any of my other pregnancies and it hit me this time maybe it was from around 17 weeks to around 27 weeks i think it was the second trimester really that it got me sorry if there's any noise it is Roe just setting up his kinetic sound to play um our internet's down he really wanted to watch toy story but he's not had a chance to play so he's playing more kinetic sound it changed the taste of everything i ate and some things like bread yogurts, um, coffee, 
um, tea. I just I couldn't have it. I was just drinking fruit teas. And I loved the coffee every morning, but I just stopped having it because it was just like this weird, I can't even explain it. I knew if something was gonna taste like it because it smelled like it. And yeah, it just affected my taste for like 10 weeks. And I thought it was never gonna go. And everyone said it will go when you give birth um, or before. And yeah, it's gone before. Luckily, I hope it doesn't come back because I really couldn't stand it. So I don't think I've had too many midwife appointments really. I think you have more when it's like your first child. My next one is next week. And I think it's just gonna be talking about like where I'm giving birth and things like that. Any other time they check your urine just to check that everything's okay and they measure your bump and they check the heartbeat but i've had probably about three appointments altogether in the whole pregnancy um, and i've had two scans and then one private that we paid for so like in the uk with the nhs you get um a 12 week scan a 20 week scan which they'll tell you the gender but i also paid for a 16 week scan to tell me the gender early yeah so i haven't really been down to the doctor or anything very much in terms of um, giving birth, I would love to give birth at home. I think that would just be like really relaxing and peaceful. But we live about 30, 35 minutes from the hospital. So what sort of worries me is like, if something goes wrong, then to get to the hospital is a 35 minute drive. And um, once you've called the ambulance out, and got down there it's just like it's gonna be about 45 minutes i guess curds could take me down but maybe that wouldn't be practical it sort of scares me like nothing's gone wrong but what if something did it could be like a matter of like life or death and that really worries me for me or the baby um so i think i will probably give birth in the hospital i'm hoping that they're gonna let me film so i can do a birth vlog i would love to be able to film that yeah i usually my first labor i had four steps then after that everything was just really straightforward and simple i just had gas in there so i'm hoping to have again pretty simple births i know anything can happen so last time at my appointment she said i had low iron but and to take um tablets but actually do you know what i don't want to sound strange but i'm not somebody who likes taking tablets anymore um i used to get really bad headaches and I stopped taking paracetamol and ibuprofen, but in pregnancy you can't take ibuprofen anyway. But I probably used to take them every single day before. I would just, I would always have a headache. And I used to just take tablets and tablets and tablets as much as I could. And then one day I just thought like, they just can't be very good for you. And so I stopped taking them. And I've probably taken them once since, which has probably been, since almost the beginning of my pregnancy and I don't get headaches anymore. I used to suffer from migraines, I used to lose my vision and I don't get them. I don't know if it's like a change in diet or I don't know if it is just because I don't take them that I don't know, but I don't get them. So yeah, she said I had low iron, but I didn't get um, tablets or anything for it. I've just been trying to get it naturally in food and stuff mm -hmm. because I just think like man-made tablets and stuff is just not something we should be taking. I probably sound crazy but i need to pack my hospital bag this week so i'm gonna hopefully pop out friday and get the bits for my bag i will share everything i put in my hospital bag i have already got a video on here of that when i was pregnant with flossy so i was induced with my first second and third flossy i wasn't induced with she was 10 days over so i'm hoping this time i won't be induced honestly my bump is so high it's so uncomfortable with feeding my baby Right, I've done a little bit of a mixture of all of them. My first, I tried to breastfeed. It didn't go very well. I expressed for four weeks and then I bottle fed. Second, I breastfed for a year. Third, I thought I am not breastfeeding again. That took too much time and that was you, little Roe. And I bottle fed him because that was just right at the time. My mental health, my children, my family. It was, I do not regret that decision. Um, and yeah, I was just really happy. And then my fourth, I thought I'll initially breastfeed her and then I'll bottle feed her, but she would not take a bottle. Um, and she actually weaned herself off me at 16 months old, which was really heartbreaking, but you just get over it quickly, don't you? It does break your heart, but you get over it. So I think I'm going to, again, initially breastfeed, but introduce a bottle a lot earlier and do a bit of combination feeding because with so many children, I found that with Flossie, it really took me away from the boys and Horatio would sometimes say like, please come and sit with us, please come and play with me, please don't go upstairs and feed the baby. 
I don't want to do that. So I'm going to introduce it a lot earlier with Flossie. I probably didn't introduce it for like a couple of months and by then she was just not interested. One random thing is that I've been getting leg cramps in the night. Um, Curtis gets them and I always find it so strange and actually so annoying because like he wakes me up to tell me that his leg's cramping and I just think I've never had a leg cramp before. Before then, I just think like, what are you talking about? And he says he can't move his leg and it hurts. And But no, now I get leg cramps and it wakes me up in the night and like the lower, is it called your calf? My calf just turns into a rock. And I cannot move it and this pain just goes through it and I just literally have to lie there till it's gone. And finally, I understand how Kurt feels. I don't know why he gets them though. Apparently it's like a pregnancy thing in your calves. But yeah, I get them. Hoping that it won't go on for too much longer. I don't get them every night. I get them like a few times a week maybe. I am so tired. I think I hadn't had a chance to be tired until now and now it's just hit me. We went away to Devon for a week and... We went last year and this year was just so different. The children were tiring. It was the same amount of children as last time. But me and Curtis both, so it can't just be because I'm pregnant, found it exhausting. Um, they did mess around a lot at night time. They're all in the same room. They are now though, but they just messed around so much. And every day was just knackering. Um, but it was lovely. We had an amazing time. Definitely worth it. It was nice to do something, get away with the children before the baby comes. It's so soon for the baby come in. Um, and I think we will go away again. We're thinking either of having like a little break just before Christmas or wait until next summer and go with children next summer when the baby's a year old. But we would love to do something again. We do love to just get away as a family. This was with my dad and my stepmom and my brother. But yeah, we do. It's amazing to go away and spend time with them like that. But at the same time, it is nice to just go away with your family, isn't it? And just have some time. All together, we recently got a new car. So we had a Ford Galaxy, which worked really well with three children, not so much with four children, and it wouldn't work with five children. It would, but not comfortably. Um, it's got the seats for it. So we got like a van car, which is a Hyundai i800, and we love it, we're obsessed with it. It has got eight seats, the three boys at the moment, Cosmo and Rue go in the back, Horatio and Flossie go in the middle and then when the baby comes all three boys will go in the back and the two girls will go in the middle with a gap in between them. It's amazing, the boot's massive, the car drives amazingly. It's quite expensive to fill up although I don't know what the Galaxy would be because I feel like we got rid of that just before the price has really hiked. It costs like £120 to fill up and we get about 370 miles. Someone asked me recently um, whether we get the miles that it says you're going to get. So like when we filled it up, the range said 370. And yeah, we did. I filled it up when it was at 340 and I still had um, fuel in it. I just needed to get it full before, you know, it got too low. But yeah, we got about 370 miles for it. But driving around Devon, we probably got about, about 500 miles for a tank. I think it was a lot of motorway driving and things like that and that really helps like motorway massively makes a difference if you're looking at like a car like that then it's like a really good one and it's just a really nice car it's so nice to drive and it's just perfect for our family i am pretty prepared really for the baby i've got all of flossie's clothes because i was literally just using them she's only just turned a year old so we've got all of her clothes all I really need to get is like nappies. I don't need to get wipes even. I just literally need to get nappies, some bottles, because I've got some bottles, but maybe not enough. Um, and some formula, which I did say I'm going to breastfeed, but I just like to have a box in case. And because I like to combi feed too, like when it's like a good time for me not to be feeding, then I can have a little bit of help. We've got a prep machine already, which I had with Ro. We've not used it with Flossie because she doesn't even have a bottle for bed. Um, now she's not breastfeeding. She just goes straight to bed. My boys have always wanted to have a bottle. The car seat we're using is an Isofix one, which we can also clip onto our pushchair. And that we bought with Ro, so we really use that. Um, and then I've got a Bugaboo donkey, which I love. It's quite an old one. I bought it second hand. I would like a new one now because... It's a you can it's a bit rickety. It's not very like it's just not very nice. Um, it's been used a lot. Um, so I'm hoping we can have a little look into getting another one for the two girls. Um, but yeah, that's all I really would like to purchase is just some bottles and a push chair. And then um, I'm just finishing up the girls' bedrooms now. So 
the baby's in with us but she's got her little area so i'm just sorting that out and then flossie's bedroom is nearly done so i'm gonna put a little video of us doing flossie's bedroom because to me it was really interesting and i know lots of you will find it interesting it went from like a navy blue bedroom to like this fairy bedroom <laughs> but when i do give birth to the baby it should be very near to the summer holidays so in the uk the children get six weeks off in the summertime from around the 22nd of July, the baby is due on the 10th, but I'm thinking if I go overdue, then that's the 22nd. They let you go 12 days before they induce you. So she's gonna be born between the 10th and the 22nd. No, I don't think she's gonna come before then because none of my babies ever have. So yeah, um, it should be good timing because I won't be having to do the school run or be getting Curtis to do the school run. We'll have I'll have six weeks to sort of like adjust to this new baby with all the children and um, I just think it's like a really good time. It's gonna be nice and hot and they get six weeks off and I'm just really looking forward to it. It's just gonna be such a lovely time to have like my children break up from school and my new baby and Curtis is now self-employed. He went self-employed over a year ago. It's been really good to us. It's been amazing. He works so hard. He has done the most incredible job at being self-employed and he's just, everything's just so much better. He has more time with us. He's earning more. And everything's just so much happier and so much nicer. And it means that when we have the baby, he's gonna try and like book in some jobs which he can do in the workshop or he will have some days off, but just to sort of be around more. And it's just so much more flexible. Um, so yeah, that is everything for my pregnancy update. Please leave me questions for my Q&A below. If I get enough, I'm gonna do it. If I don't, I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna do a Q&A of like three questions. But yeah, just anything you find interesting, um, ask and I will answer it and then if I get enough I will do a video and yeah that's everything so hope you found it interesting um, if you like my content then please subscribe to my channel and stick around for more videos and hopefully I will see you on my next video